This is the demo we're going to do today. So this is an upper molar tooth where we've got a mesobuccal root, a palatal root, the elusive MV2 canal and the distal buccal canal. Um, so let me show you step by step how I approach these cases. So first thing you need is the endomotor. Come on to this here. So let me show you how you set that up. So this is the AI motor. And the reason I like this motor is that it's open source. So it's like you can use any file system on this. Uh, so it's not locked to any particular systems. I really like that it's got a small head. So if you've got a patient where it's difficult to access, you're able to kind of get that into the difficult to reach areas. I like the way that the head rotates right around 360 degrees, uh, which again is really useful. It's got an integrated apex locator. So your apex locator will attach in here and the hook goes onto the patient's mouth. And then you've got control, full control over the settings. So for the tooth saver files, uh, these files can be used in either rotation or reciprocation. Um, and I'm gonna show you the kind of pros and cons of using them each way. So first of all, the settings are 300 RPM. So let me show you how you do that. So you go on to any of the memory programs. So let's say M1, you press P. In the operating mode, CW is clockwise. CCW is counterclockwise. SGP or OEC means reciprocation and you can set your angles for that. ATR means that you can set the files to reach a certain torque and at that torque, it'll change into reciprocation. And the speed uh, on the black AI motor can go all the way from uh, 100 all the way up to 2500. Uh, trigger torque is that's for AT or mode you can set exactly what trigger torque that you want it to go at. Uh, most people set it at 1 or 2.2 depending on the case. And then EAL so you can use actual motors a standalone apex locator as well. So there's loads of functions on this. For this particular case I'm going to set it as so for the tooth saver files clockwise I'm going to set the speed at 300 RPM. I'm going to set the torque limit at 2.2. So that means when the file gets to 2.2 in terms of uh, resistance to rotation in the canal, when it hits that limit, it's going to stop or it's going to beep. Uh, I'm not going to set up the apex locator action, but normally I have it off. Uh, auto start I normally have off as well and auto stop I normally have off and then you can adjust the position on the apex locator where you want it to activate. Okay, so let's go through the tooth saver files. So if you're starting your whole endo journey and you want kind of a very simple system, single file systems are attractive because of the simplicity of it. But the reality of me doing endo all the time, I never use single file systems because the root canal anatomy is so complex. And it's like having a single bird to do all your dentistry. It's like a single file doesn't really make sense to use on a difficult MB2 canal or a small mesobuccal canal and a big wide palatal canal or an upper incisor. So you need to choose the files that are specific for the case. So in this case, let's instrument the mesobuccal canal here in an upper six. So I place the file into the, into the uh, motor. Now what I don't do, I don't spin the file before I activate. What I do is I place it in and I try and feel, okay, am I in the canal? So I place the file passively into the canal and then I activate and I go one, two, three. So I take three bites and then I come out. Okay. So once I've found the canal, three bites come out. So you place it to resistance, activate and out. Irrigate. So you should have lots and lots and lots of irrigation in the tooth. So the pulp chamber should be full of irrigation. And then I place my hand file. Now, because I've removed that coronal interference, my hand file is going to be able to negotiate down. So I feel resistance at this point, okay? So once I feel resistance, I measure with my rubber stopper what point I'm feeling resistance at. So in this case, for a mesiobuccal root, I'm going to measure on the mesiobuccal tip. And here, I'm up to 17 millimeters. And that's a really, really, really common in, uh, in a clinical scenario where you place it and resistance is like 16, 17 millimeters. So what I do then is I measure my file. And I'm gonna make, make sure that I don't bring this file past where my hand file has gone, okay? So that means that I can be confident that this file will go. So again, I place it passively and one, 
two, three, out. And what you're doing is you're just taking, you're feeling resistance and out, feeling resistance and out, feeling resistance when you're out. And you don't go quite to the length where the, where the hand file is gone. So what you're doing here is you're doing a little bit of coronal flare. So I'm going to bring the, so that first file I used is a 1403 hand file. So once you have a loose size 10 file, that 1403 can go to length. So now I'm going to use the uh, 15 glide path file, one, two, three, and out. So now that I've done a little bit of coronal flare, flare I clean the flutes between each of them, flood it uh, full of irrigant, and then I come back in with my 10 file again, and I place this file passively, so I'm not even rotating it here, I'm just placing it passively, very, very, very small rotations, and now I can feel the file is going much further. So now that I've released it coronally, the file is progressing more epically. So tiny, small, clockwise, counterclockwise motion. So you're doing like five, ten degrees, like you're watching a, like you're winding a clock. Okay, and then you never force it. So just small, small, small motions. Okay, and you can see it getting past the little deflections there. Okay, and then a third time, and now I'm at my working length, okay? So because I've released a lot of the coronal interferences, the file is able to slide to working length. And can you see those small move movements I'm doing? So very, very, very small motions. Okay. And then once I've secured that to length, so my apex locator is gonna read when I get to this level. Okay, and then what I want to do is small, very small up and down motions. So up and down, up and down, and this is called securing the glide path. So once I can place my 10 file in, and I can passively get to length, then I have secured the glide path at that level. Now I know that I'm going to be able to go through my sequence of files without worrying that the tip is going to engage and that they're going to uh, separate. So I'm going to start here my 1403 file. So this is one of my favorite files. Now this file is got a very nice small taper. So you're not going to get any taper lock. And I place this file passively. So look, because my 10 file is gone, this file has almost got to length. So I only literally need to work this two millimeters. So that file passively without me rotating, without me doing anything, is down to 18 millimeters. Okay, so I'm going to Place it passively, there's no pressure on the handpiece. I'm not pushing the file, I'm not pushing the tip. And I'm holding the handpiece very, very, very gently. And I'm gonna activate. One, two, three, and I'm at length. So you come straight out, okay? Clean the flutes and irrigate. So you can see my irrigation is getting down to the isthmus level now. So with a 1403 file, Look how far down my uh, tip is able to get. So I'm just literally a couple of millimeters from the apex, even with just a 1403 shape. Now the next file I'm gonna use is the 15 glide path file. So this is a variable taper file. So it's got a 15 tip. It starts off with an O2 taper on the apical part of the tooth, and it's an O6 taper in the coronal aspect of the tooth. So this is gonna help you flare the canal coronally while the tip, again, is small, so it's not gonna engage. So again, I place this file passively, so I haven't spun the instrument yet, this is really important. So you place the file passively, and now without doing any work, that instrument is already within a millimeter of the apex. So I activate, one, two, three, and I'm at length. So you don't force it, it's so simple. So such a simple motion. Now my next file is gonna be a 2004 file. And I want to show you why I like this file. So this file has got what we call control memory. Okay, so control memory means is that if the file wants to go around a curve, it's not going to straighten. So with lots of systems, when you curve, straight away the file wants to straighten up. And that's why it's so easy to ledge and to cause procedural errors. When you've got a file that has control memory like this, when the file goes around the curve, it doesn't want to straighten. It's going to stay centered in the canal. And that's a really, really, really important uh, property to have once you start having bigger files. Now again, before I use it, and if you're kind of new to this, irrigate between every single file. Okay. 
Okay. And if you want to recapitulate as well, you can use your number 10 file and bring it to length. And then just secure the glide path again with small up and down motions. Okay, and it's going to help you secure your glide path file all the way to length. Now, I'm going to use my 2004. I'm going to place it passively. So you can see, again, the same thing as what happened with the with the 15 uh, with the 15 variable taper file. I'm within a millimeter of my working length. So that file is passively there. I feel it engaged. I'm not pushing it. I'm just resting it at that length. And I'm going to one, two, three, and I'm done. Okay, so it's so easy. Now I'm going to use a different color fluid now, just so you can see how far down the fluid can penetrate. Okay, so see at a 20 or three, I'm getting the fluid all the way to the apex. Okay. I'm going to just show you that again. So placing it passively, the file goes all the way to the apex. And you don't need to overwork it. Once it's done, it's done. Okay, so with a 2004 shape, I place it. So see the way the irrigant is getting all the way within two millimeters. So the tip of my needle is getting within two millimeters of my working length with a 2004 shape. So do we need to instrument this canal anymore? I think if uh, what the way I do it is, I feel. So I'm going to let the 2504, and that's literally same as all the others. So it's within a millimeter of my working length. And I activate one, and I'm at length. Okay, so for me, this canal is fully prepared at this level. I don't think we need to bring it any bigger. We can bring the needle within a millimeter of the working length. So why do we need to open it anymore? We haven't altered the canal anatomy. So the canal, the anatomy is still, ex or the apex is exactly where it used to be. We can get irrigant all the way down into the um, last millimeter or two. We still have patency. We get a number 10 file, slide into length. Okay, we still have patency here. Okay. And the canal anatomy hasn't changed, so we've maintained the curvature. So that's why, that's why the control memory is really, really nice in these, is that the control memory makes sure that the anatomy doesn't change. We follow the original anatomy of the tooth, and it's, um, it's a very, very, very safe. So if you, sh if you use those techniques, so it's a tactile control activation. So you place the file into the canal, you feel that it's engaged, and then one to three bites out, clean the flutes, recapitulate. So follow that step by step and you're good. So now we're gonna go on to the MB2 canal. Now, looking at the MB2 canal anatomy, there's often a very sharp uh, anterior curve. So it's often situated under a ledge of dentine. So from the mesiobuccal canal, often people think it's from the mesiobuccal canal to the palatal canal, but it's often more mesial than that. Um, and again, I'm lucky in practice, I have comb beam CT, so I'm able to, I know before I even start the case exactly where the canal is going to be. So I'm able to design my access cavity on that. But the key here is to try and access this at the angle. So you can see here the canal is going to come forward and it's going to go palately and then it's going to come back around. So these are multi-planar curves on these teeth. Um, and it's really common for the MB2 to be short of where the mesiobuccal is. So that's why often getting patency on the MB2 can be a little bit challenging. So again, I'm going to use a different strategy. Can you see this MB2 canal is much more torturous and much more uh, difficult to instrument than the MB1 canal. So for me, we don't need to do the same kind of tapers on this. So, I mean, I think it's crazy trying to bring big tapered files into this kind of anatomy. When you have such fine anatomy, you want to use fine files, so it makes sense. So let's see now, can I get into this MB2 canal? So I'm going to go one, two, uh, okay. So removing that coronal interference is massive. So that really, really, really opens up the case. So I'm going to just bring the file in and just see where it wants to go, okay? So see, if I force that file anymore, there's a lot of resistance there. So that file doesn't want to go anymore because there's an, an abrupt curvature at that level. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to free up the space above that. So I'm going to measure this. So we're at like 14 millimeters. 
So I'm going to measure uh, my 1403. Now, I'm going to show you an advanced technique for this. So this is the other technique that we can use. So I've already showed you how to use the files in rotation. We can also use these files in reciprocation that takes advantage of all the advantages of rotation. So the advantages of rotation is that as the file spins, it moves a lot of the debris coronally. So the disadvantage of rotation is that um, there can be a little bit more cyclic fatigue on the tooth. So this movement is a really, really, really safe movement. So it's 400 RPM clockwise and it's 50 uh, counterclockwise. So let me show you how to set that up just on the next setting. So we press, uh, so this is normally the first screen you see. So CW is counterclockwise, CCW counterclockwise, SGP or REC is reciprocation. So we click on that, get the speed to 400, torque at four, forward angle 400, reverse angle 50, and this is a unique sequence that we have for tooth saver files. So this is really, we've tested loads of different sequences on it and we found that this is a really, really good and safe way to do it. So what we're going to do is, again, passively place the file. So we're feeling resistance here and then just where does it want to go? Where does it want to go? Where does it want to go? And I see already that file is going further when our 10 file wanted to do. Now, if I'm feeling resistance and I'm feeling that the file doesn't want to go, I stop. If I feel the file is progressing, I let it run. So I never, ever, ever try and force the file. So I place it to resistance, I activate the motor, I don't push it. I want to see where does the file want to go. So again, I'm going to use the 18 file now as well. Now I want to show you a difference on these files than the control memory files. So these files don't have control memory and I specifically didn't want these small files to have control memory because sometimes when files have control memory and they're really small, they're too soft to be able to negotiate past impediments and you always keep getting blocked out. So for these small files, you need them to be a little bit stiffer to get past impediments, but then that means you really cannot push them. So you have to respect the files and see and never, ever, ever push them. So again, I'm placing that to resistance. I'm feeling resistance there. I'm gonna activate one, two, three, and out. So already, i am gone much further with, the, uh, with these files than where my 10 stainless steel file wanted to go, uh, which is interesting. Uh, now again, it's safer if you're gonna do this clinically, not to advance the files beyond where the hand files go. Uh, until you get really good. So again, lots of irrigation in here. I'm going to go back in with my 10 file then. Okay, so see this is interesting. So the 10 file doesn't want to go, whereas my nickel titanium files do want to go. So I'm getting a lot of resistance there and that's because that 10 file is stiff because it's made of stainless steel. So, I'm going to let this see already that's made a ledge. Okay, so now I've got past the ledge with the night tie files, and now see it doesn't want to go around that other curve. Okay, so what I need to do is do some coronal flare. So, again, place the file passively. Again, it's getting caught. That was the ledge that the 10 hand file was made. Okay, so I'm not trying to see now that 80, because it's stiffer, but it's still flexible, that now wants to get to length. Okay, so where the 1403 didn't want to go, the 18 wants to go. Now, this is quite an advanced technique. So this is this technique once you have a really, really good feel. So this means I have some tactile activation, um, but I'm feeling what the files wants to do. So see here, that's, that's engaged. So that doesn't want to go past that ledge. Now that's gone past, I'm going to just brush that very gently just to smooth that off. And I'm not going to bring that to length yet. So I'm not going to bring, that's the 2003 file to length until I get a little bit more coronal flare. So sequence, 1403, 1802, 2003. That's an amazing sequence to use in difficult cases. So let me show you what the hand file was doing. So the hand file caused a ledge. So you can see, you can cause a ledge in three turns. See that hand file still is getting caught up here at this level. So initially it caused a ledge higher up. Now it doesn't want to go anymore. Let me get the 1403 file. I'm going to place it passively. And that goes all the way to length. 
So my apex locator reading now will activate at that level. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and out. Okay, I'm not going to force it. So I am using an absolute feather touch with those files. Okay, I'm going to go back to my 1802 now. I'm going to see, does that want to go to length? I'm going to place it passively, and it goes all the way to length. One, two, three, and out. And now I'm going to see, does the 2003 want to go to length? So again, this 2003 doesn't have any shape memory. Okay, I'm going to place it passively. Okay, I feel a lot of resistance there, so I'm going to activate the motor. If it's not progressing, I'm going to stop. If it's progressing, I'm going to let it go. So it's progressing, one, two, three, and out. Okay, so I'm, I'm feeling what the, what the canal wants to give me. Now, once I've got to this length, if it's a really, really difficult canal, I'm going to accept that. I'm not going to try and force a bigger shape on such a small anatomy. So you can see where is the irrigant is coming all the way to here. So we're just with the needle, I'm getting it within a couple of millimeters of the tooth. Using my hand files. I'm going to see now, can I activate it to bring all the irrigation deeper down into the system? So now I'm going to go with a 2004 file. So again, if this file doesn't want to go, I'm not going to force it. So I can feel it got the resistance here, and I'm going to let it go. One, two, three, and I'm done. Okay. So for a canal with that kind of anatomy, I'm quite happy to finish on a 2004. Okay, and we've got patency now. So Let me zoom right in on this. Okay, so can you see the file tip here? Can you see the position of the file coming out on the lateral aspect of the tooth, which is really common on upper molar teeth? And see the way the file has followed all the anatomy that's there. And we've shaped that to a 2004. Okay, now, this is really important. So, see the way after irrigating, there's little bits of debris on the apical part of the tooth. So we need to free up that debris. So what I do, use a 1403 file. And I'll try and free that up. Okay, I'll irrigate. I'm going to use a 18. Okay, and now see how we freed up all that debris in the apical part of the tooth? And now we can see how, where our irrigation needle tip is getting to. So see the way it's getting to within the last millimeter of the root, even though it's a 20, 2004 shape, just passively moving that down without activation at all, the needle tip is getting within a millimeter of the apex. Okay, so then let's activate our irrigant. So we can use either sonic or ultrasonic irrigation activation. So I'm going to start off on a low setting first. Okay, so this is getting all the way to within a millimeter of a working length. I've got three settings on this. Slightly more powerful setting. And most of my cases I actually use ultrasonic. Uh, I much prefer ultrasonic activation rather than sonic. Just for this, I'm just going to demo this. This may be a little bit safer and easier to use. I'm going to irrigate again here now. So 
Now, just for to show you one really important thing. So this is the Iriflex. So Iriflex, the reason I like Iriflex is because it's it's soft. It can go around curves, you can bend the needle, okay? But you need to be very, very careful of the tip. So if you bash the tip off the floor, it's gonna bend the needle and it's not gonna work. You might be able to see this, but it's got a side venting needle. So it's a, uh, the liquid comes out bilaterally, but you must make sure that the tip doesn't engage. So I'm gonna engage the tip and show you what happens if you do. So can you see how powerful that is when it comes out. So you can see there's a little apical split there on that. Okay. So if you engage the needle, you're gonna get huge extrusion on this. Okay, and same on the MB2. So it's really, really, really important that you do not engage the needle. Okay. So last part now is to, uh, so you've done your instrumentation, you have maintained the anatomy of the canal, You've respected the amount of tooth structure. So uh, next part now is to actually dry the canals. Um, so I like to use a microsuction. So you can use, um, or I like to use the Iriflex tip and you can use a negative aspiration. So you place that to length and uh, use that in negative aspiration. So dry the canals. And then it comes to fitting your GP points. So we finished uh, these up to a 2004 GP. And this is a really, really, really useful tool. So this is a gutta percha cutter, it's called. Um, and it's on the Tooth Saver website. And what it allows you to do is you can make a GP point. So if you've got a 2004 GP point, I can make this into a 20, 25, 30. So let's say I want to make it a 3004. I can have it come out here and I can use this little guillotine on this and I can activate that and that's going to be exactly a 30 tip. Let me show you here in the microscope as well. So see the tip of that now is going to be exactly 30. And that allows you, rather than having to store loads and loads and loads of GP, you can actually just store a couple of sizes and uh, you can modify them to make the exact size that you want. Now, the other thing is the, what I use is a one fill sealer. Now, the reason I like one fill sealer is because it's really biocompatible. So it's a calcium silicate cement. Uh, it doesn't shrink. Uh, it's antibacterial on setting and, it's, uh, and it bonds to dentine. And uh, there's a lot of good reasons for using a bioceramic cement as opposed to the traditional cements, which shrink. So because the traditional cements shrunk, that's why we used to have to use heated gutta percha techniques and cold lateral condensation. Now that the cements don't shrink, we've got a lot more options. So now the thinking really is that the gutta perch is just there to act as a plunger to bring the sealer to length. And I can show you a couple of ways on how to do that. So this is the way I do it. So the one fill comes with its own tips. And these plastic tips screw on here. And you can inject the sealer in and it comes all the way out. Now the reason I don't particularly like these tips is because there's a lot of wastage. So there's a lot of wastage when you use these tips. Personally, I prefer to use the uh, um, visco tips. The visco tips don't perfectly fit on here. So what you need to do is just place it and just engage with one turn, just so it activates here and that will not fall off. Second thing is that you should have the sealer right at the very tip, okay? So don't have all this full of air and then place it into the canal. Now, injecting is an advanced technique. So if you're new to this, just put a little bit of sealer out on a pad, or you can place a little bit of sealer in the well here, dip your GP point, place it to length, take it out, dip it a second time and place it to length, and then you're done. A more advanced technique is to inject it. So you place the sealer, but you make sure the tip isn't engaged, and then you come out as you're as you're progressing. So again, place it to length and come out as you're progressing. Now what I like to do at this point, I like to get my 1403 file, I attach this to my apex locator and I gently place it, place it, place it just to make sure the sealer comes all the way to length and then my apex locator will zero out and then I come back. Go ahead and go into the mesobuccal 2 canal 
bring my file now. Can you see already? You can see just the fact of bringing the file down is pushing some of the sealer into the isthmus. Now, because we're not using sodium hypochlorite and that's real pulp, that's not dissolving from that. But see the way it's moving it into this little delta here at the very top of the MB2 canal. And that's just hydraulic condensation. Okay, so see the way we've got a little puff there, even though that's not where the canal is. So there's a little split on the MB2 route. Okay, and just by bringing the file in the MB2 exit, we've managed to get a little puff of sealer that sealed that additional exit. So once I bring my file and I know that I'm clear, then I place a little bit more sealer. A little bit more sealer there. And then I'll see uh, my GP cones. Now you need to try these in before you place the sealer. So it's like you need to make sure that they're actually going to slide to work in it. So before you place your sealer, you should have already checked this. And then you do not press these hard. You just slide these very, 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 very gently to length. Okay, and that's gone all the way down to our working length. And just a tiny little puff on the apical part of the tooth. So that's perfect. Okay, now we're going to go in the MB2 canal. Again, just going to place this. Very slowly, just let it slide. Now you can see the way the sealer's been pushed into the right up into the apical anatomy. I've got a small little puff on the MB1, MB2, and an MB3 exit. Okay, and anyone who does a lot of surgery is able to see how common it is to have multiple exits. So these are the um, teeth from Plan B, where you, they're based on real anatomy. And in microsurgery, it's really common to have MB1, MB2, MB3 exit, or just a lateral canal off the MB2 canal. So the key is, is to be able to uh, clean and disinfect that all really well. Now, on a real tooth where we were using sodium hypochloride, we'd be able to dissolve all this area in here as well. Um, and then we would have some hydraulic condensation of sealer into that area too. But that's a very, very, very simple way to do complex cases. So just to kind of, uh, just a quick kind of summary of the techniques that we use. So one, two ways to use the tooth saver files. Rotation, 300 RPM, place the file into the canal until you feel resistance. One, two, three, out, clean the flutes, place the file to resistance, feather touch, one, two, three, out. As long as the file is progressing, you can let the file run. If you're feeling resistance, never, ever, ever push the files. So you can never force the files. You have to see if they want to go. If you want to do the more advanced techniques, then you can use the, the reciprocating method, and that is 400 RPM. So that's forward and back, forward and back. So it's a whole rotation and a bit forward and uh, 50 degrees backwards. So you place it into the canal, activate, one, two, three, out. And as long as the file is progressing, you can let it run. The Iriflex, amazing for getting deep down into the canals. So you can see it at 2004, we can get irrigation right into the apical part of the tooth. And the one fill sealer flows really nicely and a single point GP. We don't need to use any heat onto those. So I hope that was useful. You can let me know if you need any uh, additional help and uh, thank you very much.